Hello world, my name is Ben. This is AnyLogic 101, a video series where I'm explaining short and quick tips on AnyLogic. And today I want to show you some stuff in the, well, in the process modeling library that you probably don't know about. Some cool hidden functions that tell you more about your agents and resource units. So let's have a look. I already prepared a simple uh, service and resource pool model. So we have agents created in the source. They go into the service where they require one agent from the resource pool or one resource from the resource pool. And the resource pool is set up with default settings. I've set up four resources that are also just generic agents. And if you run the model like that, you can see it's operating normally. And as expected, these agents seizing resources. Now, what you typically do is your resources are normally specific agent types. So you define your own agent type and very crucially, you need to tick this little box here saying that these agent types or agents will be used as resource units. That flags to any logic, aha, uh -huh, I should unlock some additional capabilities for these guys. So let's do that. Created my resource. Now we're telling the resource pool to not create generic agents, but my resource agents. And apart from that, nothing has changed. So the model still works as before, no real visual change, except that we have my agents living in here now. But what I want to show you is that now you have some cool uh, functions available. So for example, in these code sections here in the resource pool, there is always uh, a little code world called unit that refers to the resource unit being seized. So with unit dot, you now have access to a couple of cool functions like current task. And current task throws back the task that this unit is currently doing. So if you trace line this, you will see at this point, it's gonna be null because it's not gonna be, it's gonna be seized, but it doesn't have an, a proper task yet. But if you use custom tasks, uh, define your own tasks, there is an object somewhere, resource task, and your unit are starting this task, this will then tell you about that current task. So that's useful. Let me comment that out again so we don't get confused, but there's more. So let's talk about this one and unwrap this a little bit. So in the service block on seizing a unit, you also have access to the code word uh, unit. So now you referring back to the unit that is being seized by the main agent and you can do stuff with it. Um, but you don't have access to all the functions because here any logic assumes unit is just a generic agent. So we need to tell it, well, you know what? Actually, this is a my resource agent. So this is called typecasting, topic for a different thing, if you don't know what it is, but we are forcing any logic to recognize, ah, this is my resource. And my resource should be used as a resource unit. So now we have more functions available. One of them, the current task type. And this returns the type of the current task or null if, if it's not doing any task. And this is quite useful. So we can trace line this now. This is literally what I've done down here Oops. to see what current task type my resource units are doing when they are being seized. And if we look into the uh, console, we can see the task type when they're seized is called task entity. But there are a couple of more. There is task end of shift, there is task break, task repair. So you can figure out what kind of task is your resource doing in different parts of the model. Is it being under repair? Is it, doing under, is it currently on a break? So that's quite useful. And the last thing I wanted to show you about is even more powerful generally, and that is the current block function. So you can call this on any agent, not just resource units, any agent that flows through a process block or any other block for that matter, pedestrian library block, material library blocks, they always have this current block function, returns the current flowchart block. This is flowing through or null if it's in not, not in any block. So this is super powerful to learn 
where is my agent? Is it currently in a block? And if so, what block? Then you could check, is the current block uh, an instance of uh, a queue block, for example? So then you could easily check, is my agent in a queue block at the moment? So if you just trace line this, you'll see it tells us exactly where the agents are. When they enter this service block, and the answer should always be they are, let's pause there, they are in a service block. So this is, this is the throw out from one trace line. It basically gives you the details of the actual service block it's in. It's root.service with all these details. So you get a little bit more. You could also just trace line the, oops, the name of this block. And then it would just say root.service. So I hope this is, there we go, service. I hope this is helpful. These three functions can really save your life and make things much easier if you combine agent-based and discrete event modeling because you don't need to track your agents. Many people often manually track in which block is my agent at the moment or in which state or which task is it doing. You don't need to do that. There are functions for that. So that's it. Thanks a lot.